the next two verses are tied into the previous two. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I suggest you do so before listening to this one. Verse 146. The mind of all beings is that which perceives something like objective reality. And this mind is the product of imagination. In mind only there is no objective world. When one is released from discrimination, there is liberation. So, the mind perceives something like objective reality. In other words, the mind believes it's experiencing objective reality. But this is the product of imagination. It's the product of imagination in the sense of make-believe. Let me give you a definite example here. I'm going to ask you a question which I'd like you to answer as honestly as possible. What is it that is perched upon your shoulders? You've got your body, your feet, legs and so on. But what about on top of your shoulders? What's on top of your shoulders? Now if you're fairly new to this, you'll say, your head. Your head is on top of your shoulders. How obvious is that? But then I have to ask you, well, is that what you're experiencing? Is that what you see on top of your shoulders? Do you see your head? Well, you might reply, if I look in a mirror, yes, there's my head. So you've brought a mirror, in, mirror into it. And you're pointing to something in the distance, the mirror. What is really on top of your shoulders? What in your immediate experience is on top of your shoulders right now? I can see my shoulders. I don't see any head here. Now I'm not asking you for the conventional understanding. I'm not asking you for an inference. I'm not asking you for a deduction. I'm not asking you for what you've been told to believe. I'm asking you, what are you experiencing? What is there on top of your shoulders? All the answers that I've suggested you might have given me already are make-believe, their imagination, because I'm not experiencing any head here on top of my shoulders. I can experience my shoulders. Yes, there's one shoulder, there's the other. I can even experience my chest. Yes, there it is, and I can see my hands very clearly, and my forearms. What am I actually experiencing on top of my shoulders? Well, I'm experiencing just about everything except a head. I'm experiencing a video camera, contents of my room, ceiling, light, computer. I could just call it the visual panorama. I'm experiencing the world on top of my shoulders. Because there's constantly stuff coming and going within this visual panorama. There's no limit to what can be experienced on top of these shoulders. So I think it is fair to talk about the world. The world is on top of these shoulders. That's 
what's being experienced right now. Is that not obvious? Is that not ridiculously obvious? This realization is what Douglas Harding calls headlessness, which is the motivating understanding behind me doing these videos. So you see, that's that's what's real. It's so, it's so patently obvious. The world is here on top of these shoulders. There's no head here. You might say there's a head here, but that's from your that's from your perspective. If if you were here right now in this room, I would see a head on top of your shoulders. I'm not going to take that story for what's happening here. I'm not going to replace a story about what's happening out there with what's happening here. But this is what we do all the time. We replace stories for our own immediate experiencing. This is what's meant by imagination. These stories are make-believe. It's imagination. They are not what is happening right here where I am I take what I see out there and I assume it's what's happening here it's an assumption an inference I replace my experience of what is happening right here by this inference by these stories How upside down is that? So, <laughs> everybody thinks they're being objective. It sounds like nonsense to say there's no head here. But that's what's obviously the case. This mind which believes it's being objective is nothing more than the product of imagination in mind only which we can describe as the realization of headlessness because the whole universe is here there is no objective world when one is released from discrimination there is liberation. Discrimination is a word we've come across a lot. But really what it does mean is replacing reality with this imagined reality. Conventional reality, conventional understanding. This is discriminating. We're discriminating against something truly amazing and replacing it by something second rate or no better than second rate. So discrimination is not usually, it's a word which hasn't really got very nice connotations in modern understanding. And I think we can go, we can go along with these connotations because it normally indicates a very limited mindset. A mind that is set against being expansive and open, open to what is. Verse 147 tells us, Brought together by the evil habit of erroneous reasoning, discrimination asserts itself, hence the evolution of this fallacious world. <clears throat> it's so hard to go against it, isn't it? There's a whole weight of custom and expectation. 
but I hope you've been able to replace any notion of what you've got on top of your shoulders with what actually you have got. If you are new to this and you try to answer my first question at the beginning of this video, you must have thought I'm being a little bit eccentric or perverse. But if you've managed to open up to what is actually here, then verse 147 should be incredibly clear to you. You have seen the full force of erroneous reason and discrimination. You will have felt the full force of the fallacious world which we normally call conventional reality. Now, but now as I bring this video to a close, I invite you to sit for a few minutes with what is. Rather than what you think is.